Before this video even begins, I just want to say a very quick shout out to all of you. 15,000 was achieved and I cannot be any happier than I was when I saw this. Thank you all so much for the support and let's get right into the video. Now For Honor is a very, very old game and if you really think about how games are made, they normally have sequels. Great examples being COD's trash dumps of yearly releases, but also Halo and Battlefield games coming out every 3-5 to five years. For Honor being the first of its kind has lived on this earth for 8 years now. To put that in speculation, that is 8 garbage Call of Duty games in a row, and 2 Halo games and Battlefield games that this game has lived through. Is For Honor a dead game in 2024? No, I'd say it's honestly the exact opposite. This game thrives. Where the longest you'll wait in a queue is around 30 seconds to a minute, even at the dark times of 3 in the morning. As people stuck around with this Ubisoft title supporting it tooth and nail. Thousands of people show up to Warriors Dens just to see all the new things that are added to the game, even if they aren't even playing it anymore. I have a handful of friends who long quit the game, yet want to stay in the loop of what's being added. But there's reasons why they left, and plenty of reasons why people keep leaving the game on a monthly basis. For Honor is not a perfect game, far from it, but no game is perfect. Video game developers strive to make their own masterpieces, and some schmuck on the internet insults you so hard you question reality itself. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the state of the game in 2024, covering both the good and the bad. I know right now there is a lot of negativity brewing in the front of YouTube scene, whether that be toxic encounters or YouTubers expressing frustration with the game. So to put a spin on it, instead of bashing the game, I'm going to bring you like the things that we take for granted and need to start appreciating way more. Nevertheless, if you're new here and want to support, the sub button is free, and if you change your mind, you can always take it back. Let me know what you love or hate about For Honor in the comments. I read all of them, big or small, so I cannot wait to see what you guys say. looking at the bad list, there's honestly a lot to talk about. But don't worry, I'm not going to chew your ear off with the same stuff you've already heard, like this hero's OP or this hero sucks. The first thing I want to talk about is hero skins. Hero skins from launch have been perceived in a mixed bunch. And sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. Some like Kensei Blackfriar and Pirates are praised for their nice art designs. The other skins like Raiders, Warrens, and Warmongers have been left have left poor taste in people's mouths for being really forgettable and lackluster. Now obviously the skins I've listed as not great are loved by some, but these two skins have got the most mixed reception, and that's Shax and Saint-14. Basically, it really boils down to this. If you're a fan of Destiny, you probably whipped out your credit card faster than speed, whipped out his dick in front of a bunch of children live on stream. And if you have no clue about Destiny, then you probably saw this and started getting mad, saying things like, this is where we're turning into Fortnite. I sit honestly in the middle with this. I grew up with Destiny 1 when I started high school. I remember it very vividly. I was asking my dad to buy me the game for around two weeks, but he could never find it. So one day he got home and I asked, and he said he couldn't find it after i put my head down because i was a little bit sad and he did get the game though he wanted to surprise me so he tried to chuck the game in front of the table that was in front of me and ended up hitting me right in the head i was hurt but the second i saw the cover all that pain went away because i really wanted to play it so when i saw the skins obviously i was really happy but it got me thinking was this the right option or was this the easy option look being a destiny player i can say this confidently we are suckers and we are loose with our money. That's why every expansion costs over $30 and everyone keeps buying them. And not to mention the $10 battle passes in between. Destiny also just had their last major expansion and a lot of players after the final shape moved on from Destiny but still want Destiny flavored content like Destiny Rising and any other Destiny games. So from business aspects, I can see this as the easy option where that would make them a lot of money. Don't get me wrong, I love how they attempted to turn these skins from their Destiny counterparts to something that looks like it belongs in Frauner, but they still stick out like a sore thumb. In my opinion, the right option for crossover hero skins are any game that can focus on melee combat or fit the time frame. Chivalry 2, Bloodborne, Ninja Gaiden, Sekiro, Hellblade 2, God of War, even if you want to push it for a Kratos skin. All of these game franchises use melee combat and would fit Frauner's time frame a lot more than a game based in 2700. One thing I think not enough people point out is the lack of diversity in For Honor's game modes, and how For Honor is more willing to abandon them instead of bolster them up and get people to play them. The top 3 modes in this game are duels, brawls, and dominion, and only one of them can get over high activity basically every day. I know Breach can have high activity, but Breach is unplayable in its PvP state, and we'll get to that later. The game modes I want to talk about are Tribute, Deathmatch, and Ranked. First, let's get the easy joke out of the way. Ranked is still in beta and it's been in 8 years. Unless they're trying to compete with DayZ in the longest beta time, there's no reason to keep it in beta. Adding on to that, reason, the reason nobody plays Ranked anymore is the lack of incentive. They have near flooded Ranked's rewards with unwanted universal ornaments and basically haven't made new Ranked ornaments what since BB came out at the beginning of 2019. 
On top of that, they refuse to add crossplay to rank because of the quote-unquote unfair advantage PC has over console players. This was the case before, but now with performance updates coming to both consoles, both old gen and current gen consoles, you should allow console players to opt in for crossplay rank to see if that would help the ranked experience. Obviously, adding crossplay to a mode doesn't always save it, the example being Tribute. Tribute is a game mode half of the Frontier community did not even realize existed. When I hosted a Tribute tournament, I got a handful of comments saying, what the fuck is Tribute? Back in the day, Tribute and Deathmatch had their own orders in the game, being Tribute Warrior and Tribute Slayer, but were hastily removed after Frontier realized that no one was playing the game. To me, this is the lazy way out of doing it. As a dev team, you should push and need to sit down and ask questions. Why is Tribute unpopular? The answer is quite simple, time investment. Basically, the reason why Dominion is so popular is the time investment it offers. For a 10 minute or less game, you get around 60 to 80 steal for winning and 60 to 50 for losing. Tribute games would take ages to finish at some times if both teams were really good, and the rewards you got were meager in compared to Dominion's. They could have done something I think was very simple, and honestly, they can still do it today. Incentive will make people play anything, so why not have double rewards for a random game mode every Tuesday to get players playing something else? Basically, every week slap double XP on a random game mode and rotate that double XP every week to a different game mode, allowing diversity in all game modes and anyone that wants extra rewards to go play the dead game modes. This problem has definitely been talked to death about, me included. But I still think it needs its quick little jab in here, so I'll make this one fast. People in this game have a horrible mentality, where after losing one fight, no matter how close or how bullshit the fight would have been, they leave the game at any inconvenience and make excuses to why they're justified in doing so as they load into another game. The problem is that the cooldown the game is supposed to give you for leaving does not apply unless one requirement is met, and that requirement is hitting the quit to menu button. I don't need to tell you how many different ways you can avoid this, but what's the fix? In my opinion, they just need to make it so any instance of the game being left without an error message saying it crashed or the server shut down needs to lead to a 10 minute suspension. On top of that, leaving any game should result in having your stats being changed at the same time. It might not be common knowledge to people, but rage quitting does not affect your hidden MMR or stats. The only time your stats change are after the you lose or you win screen. So when people are rage quitting lobbies they cannot handle, they're only hurting themselves because they will only queue back into the same MMR bracket they were just in. On top of that, I know people are going to say, but I hate seeing boring meta stacks. What if I see four meta picks? You can't expect me to suffer. Well, no, the game devs thought so too, because they gave you a 30 second grace period at the start of any game to leave without being banned. If you don't like the game you're about to play, simply don't play it, but decide instantly instead of abandoning your team halfway through a winnable match. This is where I'm gonna get a little mean, but I wouldn't be getting mad if I didn't care. You know when your parents got super angry that you showed them a failing grade? They only got mad because they know you can do better and want to see you succeed. The same applies here. I want For Honor and the devs to succeed, but when I see changes like this, I tend to get a little angry. This is on purpose. Oh no! Oh shit! What the fuck did you do? Balancing a game is never easy. You have so many voices yelling at you and they're all saying different things you start to feel schizophrenic. There are normally three different types of voices. The I'm new to the game, don't know what this thing is, but I can't wrap my head around it. I know what I'm saying 80% of the time, but not always and can get really frustrated and lash out. And the I'm extremely good at the game, make it harder for everyone else so it's a challenge for me. Most of the time, you want to ignore both the top and bottom voices because they make up a fraction of a percentage of your player base. A game should always strive to balance for the 99% instead of the 1%. A great example of this is Mordhau aka the For Honor Killer. See how fast that went. The 99% complained about the amount of light armor, third person, mall spam that plagued the game, making 90% of all playstyles worse in comparison. And the devs did nothing about it. So you know what happened? The 99% packed their shit and left. Leaving basically a ghost town of the 1% who got quickly bored of the mall versus mall gameplay and got very religious and very toxic about the game they play. So how does that translate to Prawner? When the 99% are outright telling you that VG and Pirate are extremely potent and way too good, you need to do something about it stat. We don't have enough data. It's quickly becoming a meme in the Frontier community, only because the devs outright posted the pick and ban rates for the last two tournaments, showing that the complaints of the 99% were validated by the 1%. Another problem also comes with a large amount of people who will just hive mind and call a hero overpowered without giving any reasons. And when asked, they will just insult you for not agreeing with them. For Honor and the devs need constructive criticism and explanations on why something is the way it is. 
Pyrith is really overpowered because of her constant pressure, good damage, pistol blast countering all hyper armor follow-ups, infinite dodge cancel, and dodge recoveries, making her impossible to accurately con and consistently punish. VG is also there because, let's be real, anyone can play VG and succeed. There is a reason that she is my highest win rate on my account. If you want to win, you pick VG. Her crushing counters have the biggest window and margin of error in the game, on top of having mid-chain crushing counters and dodge attack crushing counters with even bigger windows, making 90% of all dodge crushing counters and mid-chain crushing counters complete accidents. Here's a great example. Okay, looking back at this clip, I didn't even realize it, but this crushing counter should have never happened. If you know how crushing counters works, it's when you throw a light attack from the same side an attack is coming out. But as you can see, the Lawbringer is attacking my left side while I'm throwing a light attack from my right side. So the fact that this even crushed does not make sense whatsoever. The problem here is that Frowner keeps making controversial heroes that demand their attention, but they cannot sink all of their resources into nerfing or buffing them because they need to work on the next hero's design or hotfix the hero that came before them. Also, a lot of went from a went a full year before his nerf because they had to hard focus on nerfing Afira and releasing Sohei. So the devs had to basically allow Ocelot to be in this state to work on different projects. Now Sohei exi has existed for three-ish months and he is the worst hero in the game. People made that claim all the way back in his first week of release, but Ubisoft has their hands full with VG and Pirate, the hero that came out before them and now a new hero is coming out. Basically, For Honor is that kid who was told don't take too much food that if you can't eat all of it, loads up their plate at the buffet, and can't finish any of it wasting all the food they just took. We just need one year. One full year focused on the health of the game instead of trying to cause more problems. A whole year dedicated to pushing out hero updates, hero hotfixes, and hero balance patches, and well needed reworks instead of slowly adding reworks piece by piece. Every Warriors Den, where heroes like Pirate and VG go unnerfed, and heroes like Konkanusha go unbuffed is another person's last warrior's den because they can't keep getting their hopes up just to be disappointed. Revenge is something crucial in Frauner, a mechanic that if never invented, Frauner would have died two years into the game's lifespan. But it's coming to a point where revenge is barely ever relevant anymore, and that's the fault of one thing the visible revenge meter. You do not need to be God's gift to Frauner to understand when you're going to feed revenge or and when it's safe to attack, because the game is literally holding your hand. Revenge fitting should be some sort of skills healing instead of the game going, look, 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 don't hit him, don't hit him, don't hit him, you're gonna give him revenge, don't hit him, don't hit him. That or the revenge values need to be higher because I feel like I get 99% of my revenge bar full more often than 100% of it full. The complaint here is that, well, what if I'm in a team fight and my random solo queue moron walks in and feeds him? My solution is simple. Upon locking onto someone, have a blinking shade of yellow that grows larger and more prevalent the more revenge someone has. So if someone is at 25%, it's a faint yellow. If someone's at 50%, it's more potent. And if it's at 75%, it will glow a lot more potent where you literally cannot miss it. This hides the total amount of revenge from enemies, but it should tell them just enough of a rough estimate on how close someone is to revenge. I wanted to start off with the bad and end with the good for a specific reason. When you stop watching this video, if you watch it all the way, you leave this video on a positive note instead of a negative one. I love For Honor. There's plenty of things that I appreciate, and as I said at the start, I feel like they do not get enough credit for doing stuff like this. Every game and their mothers has these now, and most of the time, these lead to extreme controversy, where some games rely on the generosity of players buying $20 skins, other companies are downright predatory, locking things behind microtransactions that enhance gameplay. But let me ask you this simple question. When was the last time you saw something in For Honor so cool, so amazing that you wanted it, but found out it was behind a paywall? Exactly. It's never. There's only two things I could ever think of that cost real life money that have no other way of obtaining them, and that's battle passes and certain ornaments locked behind hero packs. But that's literally all you are required to spend money on to get. If you want a hero in any game, literally any single hero in this game, you could pull out your credit card and shove 10 bucks in Ubisoft's face, or you can earn it for free, no questions asked. We are in 2024, a place where doing stupid fucking dances in any other game would demand $5 out of your pocket or lock it in a $20 bundle. But not for honor. You want a stupid dance for free? Sure, bud. You earned it. I'm honestly surprised we have gotten this far and new executions don't look like this. While a lot of hate is kind of thrown to the balance team, almost nobody has ever complained about the art team and the wonderful work they have done. For Honor is not just a fighting game, it's a fashion show. And it wouldn't be as popular without its immense level of customization that is continuously added every major patch. Now sure, there's stuff to complain about, like 
how they change who gets armor on what patch, but mostly it's not the art team's fault and something way higher up in Ubisoft. One of my favorite moments in every single Warriors Den is when they show off the new armor for the season. I literally blow a load in my pants when I see the new Warden armor because I'm just thinking about all the customization that I'm going armor, to be doing, armor, don't leave armor, be making, armor, armor, and all the armor, steel I'm going to be losing by trying to get it. Ooh, I'm cooking! I'm cooking! I'm cooking! I'm fucking cooking! To add on to it, the event game modes always look beautiful. Most of the time, they need to change the look of the map, and they always do a good job. Visions of the Kyoshin stands out best for me. This was an LTM back when Kyoshin first came out, where you pick up the buff. The visuals of the map fully changed, making it look way nicer. And talking about maps, let's talk about converted maps. The last two maps we got this year were the remakes of Cathedral and Viking Village, and these two maps have become my favorite maps in the entire game. Me and Fudge have made it a whole inside joke where when we see Viking Village in the map vote screen, we grunt like cavemen and vote for it all the time. That, that's that's oh, just Viking Village. Oh, Viking Village. Viking Village. Viking Village. The last topic is going to be very subjective from me, and everyone is allowed their own opinion, and all of them would honestly be correct. For Honor's community at times can be very toxic and racist, but during this first year of my YouTube channel existing, I have met some of the best and nicest people of the community where we made our own little community, where they all found people they can now call friends. Sure, when someone gets heated, they can seem toxic, but deep down, they probably didn't want to be toxic and they were just frustrated. I know plenty of people who are exactly like that, and that's me included. So many times I'm ready to start flaming, but it's just because I'm frustrated. It's not that I don't like you, it's just I got mad. Even a nice little GG after a tough game or a compliment to someone's fashion could be a turning point into a new friendship with this community, and I absolutely love it. If you were to take one thing from this video, and it's that while very little of Frowner seems good at the moment, they're still good in it, which we need to appreciate and spread. As always, I love you guys, and I hope you guys have a great day. Nice. Oh, I didn't mean to hit you.